Hi, welcome to Vacuum Workholding. This is part one of a multi-series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I make this plate right here for your workbench. That is uh, what I meant this for. Now, adding a vacuum plate to your workbench can be a real game changer, uh, especially if you have to make a lot of parts, like for sanding or so. Um, it's a very, very quick work type of work holding. And in today's video, I like to give you some pointers also of how to make a vacuum, actually how to generate the vacuum uh, for your workshop to run a plate like this. For projects where I have to cut the entire perimeter, I always like to use the tape and super glue method. So I'm just gonna use a roller to really nicely attach that. And this is the black star bond super glue. The grid lines um, make it really, really nice to align everything. So the grid lines on the spoil boards that you see right here. Next is that I put down two pieces of tape in front of the project and that helps me to set Z0 correctly because my Z0 is on top of the spoil board but the part itself is up by two layers of tape so I'm going to set the probe right on that. So this was the two length measurement and here comes the zero. So for the facing operation I cannot not use a dust shoe that just doesn't work. There is so much dust uh, ejected into the air otherwise um, that I'm not able to brace in my shop. So here you're not going to see anything from the surfacing, but you saw the surfacing bit that I'm using. The tool you see here is a compression bit, four millimeter. Not the right tool really. If you have an upcut bit, it's better, but four millimeter will get into the channels. So I had to use this one. Okay, with the vacuum channel in place, I think the first thing to do is to test how this seal would go in here. Okay, I like that. That would be nice. Yeah, I'll take it. And it's also, I think it's high enough. Yeah, it's high enough. Yeah, I think that that could work. So I'm, I think I'm gonna leave it like this. Next operation is to put a countersink screw bore right here for an M8 fastener. So, yeah, that's up next. I like to give you a close up how the plate looks like right off the machine. This is no sanding yet. So the surface bit does a fantastic job, but MDF machines fine anyways. Here you can see some lines right here, but that is mainly because I have not taken the entire um, thickness in one pass. On this hole right here, maybe there is a little bit of burr. So I think it would benefit from sanding it over just by hand, I think. I also like how that bolt engages right here. It fits nice and snug and I can just go ahead and tighten that down and sits below the surface by I think about three or four millimeters. Yeah, I think this will work out just fine. Well, for you, because you hit the like button, I'm going to have an extra tip. Matter of fact, two. And that is an aspect to the seal. Makes the seal out of a foamy, squishy material. The reason for that is that it um, needs to compress. Uh, if you make an o-ring, the o-ring will not compress. It's very difficult to compress it down into the groove and the groove needs to be designed just correctly uh, for the whole thing to work. And you have way more margin for error if you're using um, a foam style, uh, type seal, like almost like a weather strip. Um, the next is that, that this seal does need to be on the outside, not foam but it has to have like a smooth layer on the outside. Otherwise, um, it's, it's not sealed. Um, so we want it to seal. Next is the groove itself, where the seal is going to fit in. Make it so that the seal uh, doesn't stick too far out. 
Um, the optimum really would be that when it sucks down, it would be on the flat plate. Let's say if it's MDF, um, like in my case, that, that your part actually has contact with the MDF plate. Um, the force for uplifting is pretty good normally, but um, for shifting the material left to right is not so great. And when it's in contact with the plate, then there's a friction and that will also keep the workpiece firmly in place. Yeah. So MDF is a porous material and so that it doesn't leak vacuum, you need to seal it. And I use shellac for that. I gave it two coats of shellac, waited it overnight and put another coat of shellac on top of it. One of the tips I have for you is don't use a water-based material and especially not on one side and then wait and then coat the other side because your material, the MDF plate will bow. And we don't want that because it's flat right now, we machined it flat. So an alcohol-based material like shellac is much better. Now in the front I have a push to connect fitting installed right here for an eight millimeter hose like so. So it just pushes in there. And then the hole went all, goes all the way to here and I poked through with a small hole in this channel right here for the vacuum to come through. Now I like to fasten this to my MFT table and the hole pattern is 95 millimeter on that. So I use these little guys, they go normally on top, but you can also install them from the bottom. Now I made these, these are made of stainless steel. I also have a few made from aluminum and I can just drop them like this and then uh, have that over the top, put the screw head in, put the screw in and then fasten it down. That's how I like to fasten it. You can also clamp it down if you want to, but this way I don't have anything that obstructs the plate, um, no clamp or anything. Um, so that works for me. So let's get the obvious question out of the room. Can you use your shop vacuum to run a vacuum plate or a vacuum chuck? And I would answer that with, it depends. So for just simple sanding, I think you could do that. For routing, I would already caution you. Um, if the part is big enough and you have enough clamping force generated, then it, it might work out. So I've tested my Dewalt right here. And, um, oh, let's back up one. You have a dust collector, like a really large dust collector. You know, it's really powerful. Forget it, that doesn't work because it just doesn't generate any vacuum. It generates a huge amount of airflow, but no vacuum. Um, the Dewalt that I have right here actually works. It's a bypass um, vacuum. I also have a Festool vacuum and uh, it shuts down after about three to five minutes or so and uh, because it's deadheading. The uh, next tip I have for you, if you want to try your vacuum, um, the air hose right here, I made an adapter um, that is just a piece of steel that I machined and it goes like right in the front of it. And what I found is in hooking this up to the hose that my vacuum is uh, greatly uh, reduced, especially um, not so much on the on the hose from Festool, but way more on the hose from um, from Dewalt, the standard hose that comes with it. The reason is that it leaks. It leaks right here and it leaks also in the front. So if you want to try this, my tip for you is make an adapter that fits right in the front of your vacuum uh, and then plug that in here and your vacuum hose goes then directly in here. And that can be, you know, a piece of wood with a seal or something fancier if you, if you like, if you want to try it using this. Okay, let's make a test where I can show you the amount of vacuum we are actually getting if you would want to use your shop vac. All right, that's plugged in and let me turn it on. So what you just saw here was minus 0.2, a little bit over minus negative 0.2 bar that is, or 200 millibar negative. And uh, we also have that in inches um, mercury for if you live in the US. And I think that was about a little bit, that was maybe 0.6 negative, uh, excuse me, negative six inches of mercury that we pulled. And now the question is, how will that hold? Well, let's plug that in and uh, find out.
So as you can see, that works out okay. Um, it was quite some force that I needed actually to pull that up. Um, of course, you can calculate that is by the square um, square footage here by the uh, area. So I think this is a solution. Um, I don't know if I would uh, use it all the time this way, but it does work. So one drawback using your vacuum, your shop vac, is that you probably want to use your tools uh, together with that plate and you need a vacuum for that to extract all of the dust and now that is occupied by um, running the plate itself. So one of the solutions is that you can use a compressor. Now I'm not talking about the pancake compressor for your staple gun or nail gun, that won't work. But you can hook up a compressor here to this Venturi style vacuum pump. It's a vacuum generator actually. Um, I like these for the aspect that they have no moving parts and you just can't ruin them. Um, even if you suck up some dust or a chip or something like that, you all have to do is uh, take it apart, clean it, put it back together and it works. What I don't like about it is it uh, just runs my air compressor all the time, even so I used one with a smaller nozzle already. Um, so if you already have an air compressor and that is a quite capable machine, um, then you can use one of those Venturi pumps. Or if you machine metal actually and put have an aluminum plate uh, as your vacuum plate and put another plate on top of it that is also metal, then normally there is very little leakage and this Venturi pump worked pretty good. Now for this video today, I, my plan was to test this and also to show you my homebrew um, compressor that, or vacuum pump that I have from an air dryer. And I also have a bypass pump and um, the video is getting way too long already. I think I will leave that for a subsequent video. I wanted to show you how I made the plate infusion. That was one of my plans, but maybe we come together in the next week and I show you the um, advantages actually of the other pumps that I have as well. Okay, that was it for this video and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.